Hello everyone and welcome to Groove Builders. Your request for a tool video has been denied. Look into my eyes. It was really weird, R2. One moment I had my model in my hand and the next it was a dark portal. It was almost like something was pushing me to build it. Oh, hey everyone and welcome to Groove Builders, the show where we create together. I'm your host, Disorderly Cone, and this is my friend, R2. Would you care oh, for some Timothy, tea? I didn't even see you over there. And this is our friend, Timothy, the tea-serving Dalek. Back after a few bugs had been worked out. Um, hey, Timothy, since you're here, would you mind going down and giving me a cup of coffee? I've been dying for one all day. Affirmative. Thanks, buddy. In this episode, we're going to be looking at all the tools that we use here on the show. But before we get into the really complicated ones, I think it's best that we start with the basic tools. And I like to refer to these as the Triforce of Metal Model Building. <laughs> no, R2, I did not just make that up. There's a good reason why these tools are called the Triforce of Metal Model Building. <laughs> no, really, there is. Groovers, let's get down to the workbench and I'll tell you all about it. Mm, wow, that is really good. Thanks, Timothy. Oh, I know R2, but I really just want to try it before it got cold. Let me put it down. Okay, now, why do we call these three tools the Triforce of Metal Model Building? Good question. Groovers, there are many tools out there to help us build these metal models. Some are very mighty, and only the strongest can wield them. But the Triforce tools... Well, those are used for almost every model and must be mastered before completing any build. The first of our Triforce is the Mighty Wire Cutters. These are essential for cutting out all of our pieces from the metal sheets. You don't want to try and bend your pieces out. They will warp and possibly break if you try this method. Using a strong set of wire cutters will ensure that these pieces are ripe and ready for you to use. Just make sure that you get as close as you possibly can to the pieces before cutting. You want to avoid leaving extra metal around. The little bits will get in the way as you put your parts together, making your model look off, or worse, uncompletable. There are many types of cutters out there, but personally, I love to use my traditional wire cutters. They have yet to do me wrong and I've created lots of models with them. That being said, always make sure to inspect your tools before every use. Not all tools are created the same, and like all things sharp, eventually, they will get dull. Second in our Triforce, we have the Mighty Tweezers. With these metal grabbing tools, we will shape our creations to their full potential. It's important to know that not all tweezers are the same, and some might be too weak to build with. A good strong set of tweezers will last you forever, so make sure that when picking your tools to handle a few before settling with the one you like. If you would like to go pro, then I would suggest picking up a set of detailed tweezers. They look like this. In this set, you'll find a tweezer for almost every occasion, but not all of them are useful. Even these have their limitations. And as always, make sure to read the reviews before buying. I found I like the full steel ones here. They are great for grabbing some hard to reach tabs and of course helping me form some of my smaller pieces. Now, lastly, in our Triforce, we have our Needle Nose Pliers. These guys are great for grabbing hard to reach tabs in your builds, but also can be useful for shaping and bending long pieces. For instance, the bases along some of our models. Most of the time, they are long pieces of metal that need to be folded down 90 degrees. And if you try to do this with tweezers, you'll find yourself warping these areas. The best way to avoid warping long pieces is to use your needle nose pliers to bend them all at once. I also find needle nose pliers very useful for shaping some of our pieces over things like our mandrills. We'll get to those shaping tools in a moment, R2. <clears throat> so, with these three tools in hand, you will have the Triforce of Metal Model Building and be able to create wonders beyond your imagination or within the boundaries of easy to mid-range bills. R2, do you always gotta burst my bubble? 
so you don't get why these tools are considered the Triforce of metal model building? It's called Fun R2. Let's shift over to our shaping tools. Hmm, nice transition, R2. Okay, so let's say we've mastered the Triforce, and we're looking to build more complex models. While the Triforce will serve you well, sometimes you might want something else to help you with your quest to completion. Something to really set your models apart from the rest out there. Groovers, shaping tools are exactly what you're looking for. So, what are shaping tools? Well, I would say arguably anything that helps you achieve a certain shape by bending the metal over it. There are all kinds of tools out there to help you create things. Let's take a look at some of my personal favorites and how they work. All of these tools have a purpose, and some of them more than one. Let's start with our mandrills. For most builders out there, these are the first tools that you're going to grab. They are great for shaping perfect cylinders, and will help you a lot. The best way to use them and most other shaping tools is to start shaping the metal over the bigger part first and then work your way down to the correct size. This technique will avoid making any hot spots in your metal and will give you a great consistent result. The one problem I've had with them though is that they are limited by their size. You might find yourself looking for something bigger or smaller to shape things over. Next, after our mandrills, we have our friend Animate Oranges tools, and these tools have multiple purposes. Not only can they help you form cylinders, much like our mandrills did, but they can also help you form different cone shapes. These are perfect for castles, churches, and the robots alike. With CodeWookie's chart right here, you can always make sure to use the right tool for the job every single time. Next, we have our orange tools, and these tools are perfect for shaping cones of all different kinds. Much like our mandrills, you want to start big and then work your way down to the proper shape. These tools are great for consistent cone shapings. Lastly, we have our blue tool here, which is used for making domes. Domes can be tricky, and when it comes to lining up your petals, having a tool to bend them over really makes it a lot better. Or at the very least, consistent. All these tools here can be found in the description of our video if you're interested in picking them up. Then, on our lower left-hand corner here, we have our tools from Crazy Toys, and I have to say I like these a lot. And I'm not just saying that because they sponsor some of my videos. Some of these tools have two purposes, just like the ones we've seen before, with these cones right here. But what I really like about these guys here is how small they get. They get way smaller than the mandrills back here, which makes them perfect for forming really small bits of detail. Now, this tool right here is very useful for bending big pieces that my pliers just can't do, and also 90 degree bends. I read a lot of builders out there don't like to use this tool because it's very hard to put their pieces into it. It shouldn't be. If you find yours is having this problem, take your tweezers and try separating the two halves here a little bit more in the middle. This tool does tend to get squished in shipping, so popping them out a little bit will definitely help this tool be more effective for you. Lastly from Crazy Toys, we have the infamous tab bending tool. I love this little guy. It's perfect for getting at tabs that are really hard to reach, and it also secures them very well too. You do have to be careful, however, because it's very easy to break tabs. I mean, ask my horse armor over here. <laughs> Links, of course, to all of these tools down in the description down below. Lastly, we have my white doming set. These tools are awesome because they actually do three different things. These tools allow me to make domes like we have here on the Taj Mahal, as well as cylinders and cones around the rim here. This is by far my favorite set of tools, but unfortunately, the company that made them is no longer in business. You can, however, find many sets like this online, ranging from wood to metal, and some sets even come with a block, which makes it very easy to do domes. Like our other doming tool, the best way to get a good dome on these is to bend the pedals over a bigger ball first and then work your way to the right size. If you do this correctly, you should find little to no gaps in your domes, and that will make for a really sharp model. Alright R2, I think I've covered not only the basic tools, but also some of my favorites too. Is there anything else you want to add? A beginner's guide R2? This is just a short video on tools and how to use them. A beginner's guide would be a whole other video. Okay, just uh, switch the cameras out to me. Oh, good one R2. 
All right, Groove Builders, that brings us to the end of our episode. I had a really good time showing you builders at home some of my tools, and if you guys had a good time, don't forget to press that like button. For more videos like this, hit subscribe as well, as we got all kinds of really cool content like this coming out in the future. If you're looking to pick up some of these tools, look no further than the description down below, and you'll find everything pretty much you see here. Until next time, Groove Builders, keep building. Now I just gotta figure out if I'm gonna build a tank or maybe do a building next. Tank, building, tank, building. What do you think?